Hey, I'm Paul Chris, I'm your happiness expert. And in last week's video, I made this passing reference to something called the arrival fallacy. And a few people who watched the video actually inquired about it. And so I thought I'd explain that a little bit more. And it's this notion that we think we can accomplish or acquire something so that we then become happy. And that if we create these circumstances that are just right, whatever that means, then the circumstances of happiness will just simply be with us. And there's this notion that you arrive. Oh, I've got the circumstances I need. And therefore I should kind of forever be happy because I've arrived. And so often we find that, of course, that's not true. We arrive at some place that's, well, happier than the place we were before. But before too long, it starts to fade away. And so the idea that this arrival will lead us to kind of a permanent long lasting happiness always fails. That's the arrival fallacy. And there's kind of a related concept that I wanted to talk a little bit about today where we can actually arrive at a happy place and mess it up for ourselves because of what's going on in our heads. So we can get this really good feeling and then we worry and concern ourselves out of it. So stay tuned. We're going to look at how to fix that fallacy of sometimes Brene Brown calls it foreboding joy. Let's talk about that. As a coach, public speaker, and best-selling author, I teach topics just like this one all around the world. So stay tuned and I'll give you practical tools that you can use to make both yourself and those around you both happier and more successful. Hey, have you ever been there where you're just filled with joy and then you do something to mess it up for yourself? Well, every parent can relate to this. You're in a good, beautiful moment. Maybe you've taken your five-year-old to the playground and they're happy, they're playing with other little friends and things just seem blissful and fabulous. And then your child goes up to the top of the slides, climbing the stairs, and suddenly you're seized with this moment that maybe the child will fall or, 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 or maybe you'll go down the slide and there'll be something bad on it. It'll cut their leg or something and you start worrying about the things that could go wrong with your baby. And that joy might still be there a little bit, but there's this element of fear and worry about stuff that isn't real, <laughs> that messes you up. And Brene Brown recalls that, uh, recalls that foreboding joy, this idea that we've got a happy moment, but because we're busy being worried about it, you know, what if this happened? Or what if that happened? You know, I did really well in school and I'm, so I'm feeling really great about my A, but now my teacher's gonna expect work just as good, or my mom and dad are gonna expect such high grades, and I don't know if I can do that. And I start taking away from the happy moment of getting a really good grade. Or I get a promotion at work and I'm, yeah, this is so fantastic. I feel fantastic. My wife's happy and I'm just, oh, it couldn't be better. But holy cow, now I'm going to have more responsibility and I might have to work longer hours and, and oh, gee, you know? So you take this good stuff in our lives and we kind of ruin it with the, the thoughts about what could be bad. So that's foreboding joy where we worry and think about things that could be lousy and, and, it's not that we're not experiencing happiness on an ongoing basis, it's just much diminished. And there's this kind of feeling of impending doom, like it can't possibly last, right? And, and sometimes, um, you know, in old Eastern philosophy, people would talk about that grasping. Oh, there's this beautiful moment with my kid and I want it to last forever. And because I'm worried about it not lasting, I, the worry leads to these concerns about what might go wrong, right? That's kind of Buddhist philosophy 101, grasping, to hold on to the things that you like and aversive to the things that you don't want and we get all messed up in our heads instead of just enjoying the moment and i guess that's the solution the remedy comes in that and it's kind of a two-part remedy the first one is being deep be grateful hey when we've got a good moment it's not that we should cling on to it and hope that it lasts forever it's that we should be really grateful oh beautiful moment my kids up on the slide having fun and playing with friends this is fantastic, thank you. This is so wonderful, I'm so grateful for this moment. Beautiful evening, fun with the kids, all that kind of stuff, grateful, grateful, grateful. I got a promotion, let's go out for dinner, let's really enjoy this, I'm so grateful for this good thing happening in my life, right? Gratitude is the one remedy, and a habit of gratitude, which I've taught before, you know, the best one is every night before you go to bed or first thing in the morning, look to your past 24 hours and write down three things that went well and just make a solid habit of that, it's an excellent practice. And the second aspect of kind of dealing with this foreboding joy is to simply get into the present moment. Really, really get outside of your head and the worry about the future or the regret about the past and be with what is right now. 
And the degree to which we can turn off that interior dialogue of judgment and emotions and all that crazy stuff is the degree to which we can just be more content with what is. And when things are good, that means we really enjoy the good things because we're present with what is. So, you know, look to past videos. David will maybe put up a few links about meditation and mindfulness and all that stuff, which is just one of the most fantastic things we could possibly do. Hey, if you like this kind of content, click the like button, share it with your friends and family. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week. Bye for now.